This is a tram, and this is the Glenelg tram line, running from the centre of Adelaide to Glenelg Beach. It's not particularly long or special, indeed anything compared to Melbourne or the rest of the world, but the Glenelg tram, more than anything, represents why trams work. In this video will be a discussion about the different aspects of Adelaide's tram network that makes it special and worthwhile talking about. It will be split up into different sections at the bottom of the video using the chapter markers. And also, small editor's note here, when I say tram I mean light rail, but I'm from South Australia. And that means I'm not taking any of that New South Wales light rail stuff. Almost anywhere in Adelaide I have to wait more than 15 to 30 minutes for my bus or train. There are exceptions of course, especially the fast and frequent Oban. This way is not the case in Adelaide's trams. Every day of the week between 7am and 7pm, I wait no more than 10 minutes for my tram. 20 minutes outside of this time. This is unbeatable anywhere else in the Adelaide Metro network for reliability, performance and overall pleasure of journey. Even the Seaford line, which is generally held up as Adelaide's best heavy rail line, only sees trains an average of every 15 minutes throughout the day. These trains may be a lot longer and larger than trams, and can go further distances, which is very important for Adelaide's outer suburbs, but they do not match the trams enough frequency and reliability. But why does frequency matter? Because well at the end of the day, frequency is freedom. Hashtag frequency is freedom. Something I want to talk about a lot more on this channel is this concept. Trams are not guaranteed to get such convenient frequencies. But they almost always do. The infrastructure is already built, it's well known that a tram does not really cost any more than a regular bus. And trams with their higher capacity and greater amenity are far, far superior to the average bus. While not universal trams, it is a feature almost all good tram lines have. And I'm not talking about how fast the tram actually moves, it's not exactly an express bus but rather how it does not get stuck in traffic along its route. The Glenelg tram has little boom gates along most of its route like it's a little train. This makes it time competitive with driving at all hours and downright beats it at peak times. While many of Melbourne's tram lines suffer from congestion, it's safe to say that Adelaide's does not. It runs in its own dedicated corridor which also provides for a safe cycling route and it has become the busiest in Adelaide and has needed continual upgrading and improvement. With no need to park my tram when I get right off from the centre of the CBD, and no need to worry about what time my tram home will arrive, I can safely go about my business in town. One criticism of the speed of Adelaide's trams, however, is how slow they continue to be through the Adelaide CBD. They generally do not enjoy signal priority, which is where a tram will have priority over the cars it shares the route with. As most of the route through the Adelaide CBD was built a quite a long time ago, it does not have these modern features we have when we consider light rail. The Glenelg tram should probably receive these features, especially along routes that are not major bus corridors. Places like Grenfell and Curry Street obviously shouldn't have priority over the tram line, and other small intersections in the Adelaide CBD could certainly receive tram signal priority. While the stations along the tram lines aren't generally a whole lot nicer than the standard bus stops, that's not to discount them. All stops have a shelter and are very well maintained. They very importantly provide disability access and are entirely DDA compliant. And DDA is something I'm sure you'll be hearing about more on this channel going forward. While some complain the stops are too closely spaced, in general they're all about right. As the trams have good acceleration and distances are short, a stop removal project would see very limited benefits along the line and would anger residents. The trams themselves are also a key component of a successful light rail service. In Adelaide they are about 30 metres in length. For comparison, a typical Adelaide train is about 75 metres long and a bus is about 12.5, and an articulated bus is about 18. The size of trams along Adelaide's routes is just right. They're not large enough so that transport agency will only run them 
irregularly, and they're not small enough to become too crowded during peak times. They are low floor without, which isn't just for those with accessibility needs, but also allows the trams to hold more people and allow disembarking and boarding the tram to be much easier. You will notice a key feature of trams is they have a lot less seating than buses. This is largely due to the amount of doors a tram has, as a tram needs to disembark a lot of passengers, especially in the Adelaide CBD and at Glenelg. Due to the generally shorter nature of tram trips, this is allowed, as you can stand for the entire journey without feeling too tired by the end. However, one drawback of this is definitely you should not run tram lines along longer routes, which is certainly a problem that some cities in North America have with their new and modern light rail services. That's enough about Adelaide's trams for the moment. Now let's turn our attention to interstate, to a little known east coast city called Melbourne, well known for the trams it's kept. As the first guest appearance in one of my videos, we have Metro Man Melbourne talking about why Melbourne kept its trams. Hi, I'm Metro Man Melbourne and I ride trams a lot in Melbourne. I'm going to explain why Melbourne kept its trams and how these arguments are still relevant today. Melbourne in the 1950s and 60s resisted the trend to remove trams for several reasons. One of the most powerful arguments was that trams had higher capacity than buses and that trams don't actually cause congestion. Even today, the highest capacity buses have lower capacities than an E-Class tram or a double Citadus tram in Sydney. As for the supposed argument that trams cause traffic congestion, when Sydney removed its trams, its traffic actually increased along former tram routes as people who used to ride trams moved to cars, despite the buses replacing the trams actually having a shorter length. Other arguments are certainly more applicable to Melbourne. However, Melbourne's trams were certainly newer than other cities, but even then, some routes were 40 plus years old, about as old as Adelaide's tra former tram system at that same time. Melbourne's tram today, you could argue, are still quite slow and expensive to maintain. However, trams have things other vehicles don't. Trams are actually cheaper to run than buses. Even their inflexibility is still a minor issue compared with far higher capacity as a benefit. I think Adelaide made a horrible mistake in removing its trams, so hopefully it will rebuild some lines in the future. And that's about all this video has to say. Trams work. Don't let anyone tell you a bus is more flexible for a job a tram should be able to do. Trams aren't obviously the, the solution everywhere. If we replaced the 42 km long Golder line with trams, it would be a much worse experience for all of Adelaide's north. But mostly because the idea of trams is to travel shorter distances better than a bus can. Adelaide should build more tram lines. Australia should build more tram lines. Heck, the world should build more tram lines. Trams are great. I like trams, and you should like them too. Thank you for watching the video, and especially a big thanks to Metro Man Melbourne for helping me with his contribution. Obviously this video is a bit different to the stuff I normally do, and this is the direction I do want my channel to head more slowly. This video has had a lot of effort put into it, so thank you for watching, please consider liking and subscribing, and sticking around to see more content like this in the future.